Mm. Okay, next question is from Lauren. Lauren asks, can you explain why you choose high reps in your Jesse's Girls Muscle Building One program? Articles I read always mention how overtraining will hurt muscle growth, which is right. Well, first, high rep, for those of you that don't know the Jesse's Girls Muscle Building program, high reps is not happening throughout the entire program. It's only happening in one phase of the program. Here we go. So there is a big difference, Lauren, between a phase in a workout program with high reps and overtraining. The definition of overtraining is reaching a point where a person may have a decrease in performance and they're plateauing as a result from that training load, the amount of training that you're doing, exceeding the rate at which you can recover. And when you do that, when you're training more frequently and harder than you're giving your body a chance to rest and recover from those workouts, you're basically ceasing to make progress and you can even begin to lose strength and size. So that's probably what you're reading in the articles is that high reps, you're saying high reps is overtraining because you can start to lose muscle size and lose strength because you're just doing high reps and training so much all the time. Um, definitely not. If high reps is just a short-term phase in the larger scheme of your training program, that's not overtraining whatsoever. Overtraining has to happen over a long period of time where you're never ever allowing your body to recover. A lot of times overtraining happens to people that are addicted to exercise, they never take rest days, they don't know how to take a rest day, and rest day does not need to be just sitting, watching TV, flipping through channels. It's not like that. You can have an active rest day. You can go to the gym on rest day. I just don't want you to do a big, intense workout. I want you to just get on the step mill for a little bit, go for a hike, go for a bike ride, uh, take a light yoga class, anything like that is definitely a rest day as long as you know that you aren't pushing it super super hard so I would say that Bikram yoga is not rest day yoga even though I love Bikram yoga it's very intense I would say that you know power yoga is not a rest day but any sort of like restorative yoga or just a yoga flow or or sun salutations or something like that is great on rest day foam rolling uh, my gym has a foam rolling class, which is awesome. I keep meaning to take it, but uh, I never get over there in, in time, or I never get over there at the time the class is at. Getting a massage, going to a like a muscle release massage therapist type of an appointment, going to the chiropractor, uh, going to the spa, not doing anything at all, but you're doing something, you're taking care of your body, you're nurturing it, you're recovering, you're resting, getting in the hot tub, going to the steam room, whatever going for a hike. I live in Arizona. There's amazing hiking all around me and I love doing that on rest day. I'll go hike Camelback Mountain or I'll hike Squaw Peak. Amazing stuff to do on rest days. If the weather is nice where you're at, you can go for a bike ride, you can go for a walk. It can be a hilly walk, whatever. It just, you know, you know when you're pushing it too hard. You know, that's all I'm gonna say. And I'll just trust that you are actually resting and having an active rest on your rest day. Da, 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 da. It's during that rest and recovery that your muscles grow. So you beat yourself up in the gym, you beat yourself up during your workouts, and it's common to think that that's when all the magic is happening. But really, when your muscles grow is when they're repairing themselves from that workout. And if you keep training and you're super sore and you're supposed to have one to two rest days every week, and you train through those rest days, you're never giving your muscles, your body, yourself a chance to recover. Therefore, you never let that muscle regrowth and rebuild process happen, which is how you start losing size and you start losing strength and you start falling apart. You just keep running yourself down, running your muscles down until you eventually just poop out and hit a plateau, you don't gain any size, you start getting sick, everything just stops working hard for you. So overtraining is not not doing a comprehensive 12 week program where you use higher reps for weeks two through four and then moderate reps for five through eight and then low reps strength reps for nine through twelve it's that is not overtraining that is mixing it up that is going from high reps to moderate reps to low reps or ho however it is that you're going to set it up or that your trainer sets it up with you you're still recovering muscle groups in between workouts even if you're in a four week high rep phase you still have rest days so you're still recovering from those workouts if you're doing body part split training back day shoulder day leg day 
arm day, shoulder day, whatever. You do back day on Monday, and then you have shoulder day and chest day, and then a rest day, and then you go back to back day. That was three days in between back workouts that your back muscles recovered and rested. So I hope that's making sense. It is so important to tax all of the systems of your body in order to make changes to your physique. The higher rep range will condition you, the lower rep range will strengthen you, the moderate rep range will grow muscle size. All of us have different muscle fibers, so it's very important to train to all of them and see what your body adapts to the best. Strength, conditioning, size. And doing that will maximize the potential that you have with your strength and your size and your conditioning and your overall physique and health and fitness. Keep going, you're doing awesome.